So we've started out this section of visualizations that are used to show part to whole data with the pie chart, of course, because it is a sort of classic, famous, most familiar chart type to use. But another chart that you can use to show part to whole data is something called the tree map. And as you'll see in today's video from Nicholas Elmquist from the University of Maryland College Park, uh, the tree map wasn't originally designed to show sort of traditional part to whole relationships. So I'm going to hand it over to Nicholas so you can learn more about the tree map. Hello, my name is Nicholas Elmquist and I'm a professor at the University of Maryland College Park. The chart that I'll talk about today is called tree maps and it was actually invented by my colleague, Ben Schneidemann, who's a professor emeritus here at, at the university. In the early 1990s, Ben was struggling with ways to visualize large hierarchies, or more specifically, he was visualizing the file system of the computer science department. And in the end, he came up with this idea, which is based on space enclosure, basically having rectangles contained within rectangles to show hierarchy. This picture here shows an example of visualizing this file system where we use uh, uh, this idea of enclosing figures, enclosing rectangles that show how different leaves and nodes in the tree are structured. The link at the bottom of the screen shows more information about the history of tree maps. And I invite you to take a look. It's an interesting read. Tree maps are constructed by taking a hierarchy like the node link tree on the left here, and then turning it into space filling representation that takes all of the available space to show the structure. So if I would start with this root node of A, given an amount of screen space, like on a screen or maybe a mobile phone or something, I would then start to slice and dice this space first in an alternating way, first vertically and then horizontally, vertically and horizontally. So slicing for the first level, I would lay out these two nodes, B and C, side by side as rectangles contained within the A rectangle. And then as I move to the next level, visiting B, I would get a single node representing the, the, uh, the D child. And then for C, I'd get three children, E, F, and G. And then finally, age contained within F. So my final tree map would look like this, being a representation of the node link tree on the left. So that's the fundamental approach. There's a couple of things to bear in mind when you are designing a tree map. Even if many of the existing visualization tools and toolkits already support tree maps today, there's a few things that you want to think about. One is that a standard slice and dice layout tends to end up with very thin and long rectangles like you see here on the left. This is fine. I mean, it's still based on the fu fundamental tree map technique, but the problem is having very different aspect ratios on one part of the chart makes it difficult to compare it to a different aspect ratios on another part. So it's hard for the human eye to, to figure out the area. So the approach that has been designed over the years since the original tree map algorithm was proposed are called squarified tree maps, where the layout intends to make each of the rectangles that are enclosed within parent rectangles to be as close to a square as possible. Because if they are square, then it's much easier for you to compare one variable to another. For example, if we are using the size of these rectangles to show the file system size of each file, or if you're trying to convey the stock market value, which has been used in, in some application of tree maps, then using a square file layout will help. The other consideration is thinking about whether you want to show the labels on internal nodes. Most of the time, a tree map does not show labels for internal nodes. It only shows labels for the leaves. And that makes sense most of the time, especially in the original file system application, because of course in a file system, it's only the files, the leaves of the tree that actually have a size, whereas directories are only containers. But in this example you show here, also an early example of a tree map, it does make sense sometimes to show the labels for the years here for 1991, 92, 93, 94. The problem with this is that as soon as you start as allocating space for showing labels on internal label on internal nodes, you're going to get less space free to use for showing 
the actual leaves. So that's something to consider. There are many examples of excellent tree map designs. Already as early as 2007, tree maps started showing up on the New York Times front page, which is kind of exciting. It's one of these uh, visualization techniques that were designed from an academic lab that have eventually had made a, a huge breakthrough into uh, mass media and uh, even for uh, normal uh, 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 casual users. But the one I particularly like is, is Ben Schneiderman's own tree map art project. It is an exhibit that actually was featured also physically. It is already, it, it's already at the computer science department here in, on campus, but it's also been you know, shown in, in various places like the National Academy of Science here in Washington, DC. Um, there's more information about the tree map art project at the link at the bottom. I just wanted to show you this particular tree map, which is a visualization of last FM play data, something like uh, uh, 10 million plays of, of uh, um, the first 10 years of last.fm. And the tree map has been rendered in the style of Pete Mondrian's work. So you have these uh, uh, different color schemes that are very distinctive with, with Mondrian's work, but here they're showing actual data. And that's the fundamental message of Ben's exhibit, that data and data visualization can have a very aesthetic, al almost art-like characteristic. So I invite you to take a look at this exhibit because there's many exciting uh, uh, tree map paintings or art-like tree map representations that have use real data, but also are influenced by actual artists in their drawing style. That's it for me. I thank you for this opportunity. I hope you'll use tree maps in the future and that these guides will be helpful. Thank you. Thanks to Nicholas for that great review of the tree map. As you can see, it's a sort of squarified version of a pie chart, but there are lots of ways that you can uh, annotate it, label it, change the colors, and show different things inside and around the chart. So come back tomorrow and we'll round out this part to whole section of the one chart at a time video series. <laughs>